Hello fellow space engineers, my game name is Damodark. I have been working on a ground-based vehicle off and on for many years now since Planets came out. And I kept heading into problems that you can never always climb various mountain sides. You would have issues trying to get up on cliffs, especially on the alien planet, which is just about all cliffs. And so I decided to see if I could make a hybrid vehicle. And this is what I've come up with. This is Rhino Prime Mobile Operations Base. Now it's not designed for direct confrontation because there's too many things vulnerable to get destroyed. Unless you really got a lot of resources and you don't care so much. But this is actually a flying vehicle. So as you can see I've got thrusters in the front and the back and even on the bottom. There is eight thrusters to give it the full capability of going in the air. Even on the alien planet with some cargo. If it turns out you actually needed to have additional thrust to help get you in the air, then there is two upgrades that you could choose from. Number three is the additional thrusters refit that adds two thrusters and you have to move your turret or remove it, your choice. And this will give you additional thrust to keep you in the air longer. Now at the same time, some planets do not have oxygen. Well you need to have oxygen generators but you only have so much ice you need oxygen farms as well then so I also made another blueprint in here that if you ever needed it this is the oxygen farm version so at this stage I'm gonna just go through the vehicle if you want to see it in action check out the video there is three different situations that occurred one was the driving and some changes that happened along the way ground combat the second one was designed to be a, a air combat so then we launched into a fight this is the vehicle being shown however we also went into the fighting sequence as well a little bit and then the final one was one of the aircraft actually got damaged badly and was having difficulties slowing down never minding landing and so we actually took Rhino Prime and flew it and actually did an air pickup in the process. So right now, as you can see, there's a vehicle bay through the back entrance, which is currently open already. And it has a hangar door arrangement. So then it extends it to help make sure that you have a chance to climb up and on top. It can be tricky depending on the terrain, but it is adjustable. And it fits two ground vehicles inside and they fit perfectly the two rovers I have myself. And up here, as you can see, it's got a showing of all the systems and damage and anything that is de decompressed at this stage. Button panels to control most of the features more manually. Going inside, the usual upgraded assemblers and refineries are inside, depending on the role you need it to do for you. Coming into the center section on the belly here got an open room space for many things you can stick in. These yellow blocks are actually holding oxygen outside, but it's only because I actually intend to put in the Nanite factory mod when I get back on my stream. So that means these blocks get removed if you had a mod that would fit and keep it airtight still. Now, one of the features that I have done in this design was that you don't know if these doors are open or shut half the time. So you have buttons here to actually shut them to make sure your decompression cycle goes through if you need to conserve air. Now, one warning, this is survival ready. As you can see with the button panel, there's the airlock pressurization system still there too, but this is the lower boarding ramp. And in creative, I have yet to have any real problems, but sometimes it will stick to things it's not meant to, and Clang immediately raises his ugly head and says, nope, penalty day. And that day, I actually watched this entire ship with nothing on for driving or flying fly over two kilometers in the air, went over the edge of the cliff, and pancaked on the other side to about one third its original scale. <laughs> Please note that was with less intact than intact. So, the center room here is the utility room. You've got programming blocks, you got timer blocks oxygen system and some of the backup batteries to help try and keep it alive going upstairs here and yes this is all airtight going upstairs we're going to go into the cockpit area 
Now, some of the projectors sometimes will cause glitches on the screens, I've noticed, but it does depend on what you're doing at the time. There is no glitches when it's actually shut off. So when you're sitting in this command chair, you have the first group of controls for most ground features. The thrusters are used to assist in getting up to speed or putting on the brakes faster than usual. You've got a compass in the front and on Mac LCD2 programming, very nice, very handy, and it tells you what your situation is with your power choices. And even on the back wall, since you don't need that during your driving needs, is all your inventory information, and again, a showing of any damages that are occurring to your vehicle. And let's go upstairs a bit more here. The typical medical bay. Again, some of the same stats on different LCD screens to make sure when you're getting into your game, you have an idea of what your situation is. And just so you are aware, if you're not used to it, these numbers are the suggested amounts that you should have as a minimum in your vehicle. That doesn't always mean it is what you need to have as a full size amount. Even still, it's good to know how much you have in your inventory at all times. Now I've arranged this so then you can actually have up to seven cryo chambers to support up to seven people. That means you can have one working with the base, two driving, and four flying depending on what you were flying at the time. So I'm going to do a quick cycle here on purpose. Decompression is on. And out I go. Now actually the tanks are full so it's not going to do it completely. And then we're on the roof. So as you can see here, there's four landing pads available for whatever aircraft you wish to put on it. Depending on the scale will determine how much space it takes as usual. And you see that there's a large number of solar panels. Well, there is actually 22 of them when they do not need the oxygen farms. But in the end, this vehicle is very good on the ground and even better in the air. And I hope you guys appreciate what you see. Again. Egon's Ghost and GD Taylor are two friends of mine who assisted me in doing the recording with the video. And check it out. You might enjoy what you see here and might want to use it in survival. Well, have a wonderful day and see you in the next videos of Space Engineers.